Greetings, I'm Steve Bamford and welcome to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, the home of the Golf Bank Show and the Golf Bank System podcast. We are back with the 2024 Texas Children's Houston Open. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more information. And of course, please bet responsibly. Don't forget to visit Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource. We are two weeks away from the Masters. Golf Betting System, the place for free data. Betting previews for both events this week. Hero Indian Open on the DP World Tour, the Houston Open on the PGA Tour. We've got strokes gained rankings for both events. You can come and use them completely free of charge. Yeah, free rankings. Yeah, no paywall. We've got predictor models, lineup generators. It's all available. And of course, form statistics. Golfbettingsystem.co.uk. Just type golf betting system into Google. That'd be the most sensible thing. On top of that, the Golf Betting System podcast will be out on Tuesday. That is the 26th of March. That will be out around about noon over here in the UK and Ireland. That will be out 8 a.m.-ish Eastern time or in the United States. Okay. What do I need from you guys? I need your help, effectively. I have hit a ceiling. I'm kind of against this ceiling, and I can see oxygen and blue skies and sunshine on the other side, but I can't quite get to it. And it's all down to you guys. I need your help. I can't get through 246 likes on a golf betting show this week, uh, this year. Can't get through 246. So I need you. I need the cues. All of you regular guys, get on the YouTube group and let's drum up likes. Over 250 likes. Let's get through this ceiling. We're only two weeks away from the Masters. So please help me with the likes. On top of that, the algorithm, as you know, needs likes. It needs new subscribers. I know that 50% of you do not or are not subscribed to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Show respect for Steve. Press that subscribe button. Make sure your notifications are switched on. We're getting towards 4,500 subscribers, which is nice. So thank you to all of you. On top of that, I don't care what you write, what you say. Nothing will upset me. Just comment in the comment section below. It helps the algorithm. And guess what? When you help the algorithm and the AI, all of a sudden, this video is seen by thousands more people via YouTube and via Google. So, like 250 likes. Let's crash through that barrier. Please subscribe. And of course, comment on the video. As I say, it takes a lot to upset me. And if I do, don't like it, I'll just ban you for life. So it's not really a problem. Right. We are in Houston, Texas, baby. We are back for the Houston Open, which has been returned to its standard uh, part of the PGA Tour schedule before the Masters. And it's really good to see, we are coming back not to Redstone as, as us oldies remember. It's the Memorial Park Golf Course. This held the, let me get this right, the 2020, the 2021 and the 2022 Houston Opens that were in the full part of the schedule. Um, it, the Memorial Park Golf Course, it's a cracking, uh, cracking golf course. It has to be said, it, it, it's a municipal it, it uh, tends to 60,000 uh, rounds of golf every year. I could go and play there if I wanted to fly from the Shires here in the UK out to Texas. I'll give it a, give it a go. This golf course is a John Bradamus original, 1935. Tom Doak renovated in 2019 with the help of Brooks Kepka. Not a lot of sand on the golf course. So, how do I categorise it? Mid-score? I think this year... Looking at the wind forecast, looking at the amount of rain that Texas, this part of Houston, has taken. I reckon 15 to 17 under par wins it this year. So mid-score in terms of the target required. It is long. It's a 7,000 freshly extended, 7,435-yard golf course. On top of that, it's a par 70. Wow. 23 bunkers in play which is two more than we saw last time we came here. Holes with water hazards in play, only the four. Acres of fairway, 28. Here's another one of the differences. We're again seeing rye, grass, perennial in the rough, 
and Poa Trivilis on the greens overseed. We've seen it for months on end on the PGA Tour. We're seeing it again this week. We didn't used to see that when they played this in October or November. So, Mini Verdi Bermuda Grass Greens, which are overseeded with Poa Trivialis. These are the same green types that you would see, undoubtedly, at the Zurich Classic of New Orleans at TPC Louisiana. Quite unique greens. The Mini Verdi Bermuda Grass, overseeded with Poa Trivialis. They have extended this golf course 7,435 7, yards. They've basically um, added 23 yards to the par for 17th with a green complex which has been moved back and they've actually put two additional bunkers to guard that green. However, this is not a traditional par 70. Why do I say that? Five par threes and three par fives. So, two of those par fives are on the front nine. There's a drivable par four on the 13th. And on the back side, there is one further par five. So, not your traditional par 70 with only the two fives. Three par fives at Memorial Park. So, yeah, that's your agronomy. The weather, warm enough. Nice and warm. I think we're looking at 24. 4 to 27 degrees. If I could find the section of my preview, I would tell you with some fact. Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're finding it. Yeah, here we go. 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. For those of you in the northern United States, uh, the United States, 77 to 81 Fahrenheit. Uh, March has been wet, 114, 114 millimeter of rain. That's four and a half inches uh, building up to tournament week. 66 millimeter, two and a half inches of that was last week. There's going to be thunderstorms with near certainty of rainfall on tournament Monday. So probably about now over in Houston. So I do genuinely think that this golf course isn't going to run as firm and as fast as we have seen it in 2020 and 2021. I think it's going to be softer. All of that POA trivialis and all of that perennial rye overcoat, if you like, it's just going to slow everything down. Um, they've apparently made the rough slightly shorter this year. It's the PGA Tour way. They are making these courses easier. So I do think 15... To 17 under, especially with a wind forecast, and Hugh, and Texas golf is synonymous with it's like te it's like Florida, synonymous with strong winds. You're not really going to get them this week. 10 to 15 across Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thursday looks as calm as you like. Thursday, you need to get a low round in to get towards the top of that leaderboard and fight it out because I don't think players here that start slowly tend to catch up. Finau first, Kokrag 18th and Carlos Ortiz were second after Thursday. In terms of um, strokes back, Finau was the joint leader. Kokrag was only three back from the lead. Carlos Ortiz was only two back. So, need a fast start on that very calm Thursday. Right, Let's take you through what you need to be a champion around here on the Memorial Park Golf Course. I'm going to start, for once, with the traditional stats. So, Finau, Kokrag, Carlos Ortiz in 2020. Go through what they did as champions across the field that made the cut. Average it through. Driving distance 16th. You need Mumbo this week. Mumbo. Driving accuracy, 26th. Greens in regulation, 4th. Proximity to hole, 16th. Scrambling, 27th. Putting average, 13th. Funny how that putting average stat, putts per GIR stat that I threw at you last week, came through again at the Valspar. Peter Malnati. That golf course is so... Short game heavy, it drags everybody down to low greens and regulation. All of a sudden, it's about it's all about chipping and putting. 
This course is slightly different though. Greens in regulation, very, very strong number. Driving distance, a very strong number, which we didn't see so much of last week at the Copperhead course at Innisbrook. So we need Mumbo off the tee, need high ball flight. I read a lot of comments here from players saying that if you're not hitting fairways here and you're in the rough, a lot of the greens here are on elevated platforms. And to get the ball up and to stop, you need to have a high distance to apex. You need some big hitters this week in Houston. I don't think it's a Mackenzie Hughes kind of course. Although with his magic beans and when the wind blows here and when it's firm, yeah. This week, softer conditions, less wind, not so sure. I'm not so sure it's a Mackenzie Hughes friendly track. Maybe kind of a top 10 if he's playing well, top 20 would be more likely. And as you know, we were all over him last week for the win at the Valspar. Now, in terms of strokes gained, same approach. Strokes gained off the tee, 16th. So, long and crooked kind of works. Strokes gained on approach, 8th. Strokes gained around the green, 33rd. You'll remember, compared to last week, that is way down. Strokes gained tee to green, ninth. But this tee to green, unlike Valspar last week, isn't approach and around the green. It's off the tee and approach. Strokes gained putting, and this is an absolutely killer number. Killer, killer number. Third. So you've got to be top 10 tee to green, made up mainly of distance and of approach, and you've got to have a really hot putting week. Team no putt is not in effect, which he finds a bit weird when it's such a long 7,435 yard par 70. But those are the numbers. Interestingly enough, as all when you break down the literal the strokes gain numbers here, tee to green and putting, I believe if you take those three champions, it's per round about 2.1 tee to green and 1.85 putting. So, like I say, strokes gained is not 100% team no putt. We need players that are good from tee to green, but also can make some big numbers with the flat stick, and that becomes a real issue. When you look at this field and you look at players like Will Zalatoris and players that literally struggle with their putting and can't make upwards of over a stroke per round on the PGA Tour. So bear with me. Um, it could be quite an ecclesiastic list this week in terms of who I've gone for at the golf tournament. Right. Strokes. Uh, I'm going to take you through the top 10 of my predictor model. Uh, this was the model I pulled together the morning as part uh, Monday morning as part of my process. Of course, I put a link in the description box for the predictor model. You can come and use it as many times as you want, free of charge. This is my top ten. If I mention additional each way places, all the fifty odds. Top ten: Jason Day, twenty-eight to one with Bet Fred at ten. Nine: Joel Damon. I just watched. Literally, over the weekend, I watched his episode of um, Full Swing, part, uh, the second series. And um, it was great to see those guys hugging it out on the private jet, wasn't it? Joel Damon, 100 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. Let's hope he gives a crap this week. Eight, Sahith Tigala, 22 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. I'm reading these numbers out because they are the best in the UK right now. Seven, Cameron Champ. Who'd have thought? Big boy golf course. Cameron Champ comes into the top 10. 150 to 1. Played a lot better last week at Valspar. With Unibet, six places each way on Cam Champ. Six, Tony Finau, defending champion. 20 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. Top five, Alex Noren. Never wins on the States. Likes this course, though. 40 to 1 with Betfred. Four, Siwoo Kim. Going to be hugely popular this week. 35 to 1 with Betfred. Three, Keith Mitchell, 40 to 1, with William Hill, eight places each way on Kashmir Keith. I was on him last week, first round leader, finished, uh, I think he finished T6. I had five, uh, five places. And of course, burnt everyone really badly on Sunday, because as we know with Kashmir, on a Sunday, he's great when he's eight shots or nine shots off the lead. He's absolutely horrendous when he's in contention. So, Kashmir Keith Mitchell, 40 to 1, with William Hill, eight places each way. Two, Wyndham Clark, 14 to 1 with Ball Sports 
eight places each way. And of course, number one. Number one in the world, Scotty Scheffler, three to one with William Hill. That's where we're at. We're at Scotty Scheffler, Tiger Woods kind of prices. And can you actually... I know he's no Tiger Woods. And linking him to Tiger Woods is unfair both to Tiger Woods, it's unfair to Scotty Scheffler, and it's just not correct. But this guy is an unbelievable specimen. He really is, is Scotty Scheffler. Uh, strokes gained rankings. I know you love this part of the show. Don't forget the full top 25 lists are in my betting preview, which are in the description. Strokes gained off the tee. A number that we need to look at this week. Didn't look at it last week, I don't believe. Top 12. Uh, I take this over the DP World Tour and, of course, the PJ Tour. Where? I can. 12th, Norman Jong. Tie for 10th, Sahith Tigala and Jonathan Vegas. 9 is Cameron Champ. If you're looking at this statistically, you cannot get rid of Johnny Vegas this week. <laughs> Apart from the fact the guy cannot putt. Uh, 9 is Cam Champ. A tie for 7th, Kurt Kitayama and Kashmir Keith Mitchell. Maybe he needs to swap that visor for a cap. Thoughts? Um, what do you think? Mention it in the comments section below. Don't forget, you can follow me on X at Bamford Golf. Seven, uh, six is Alejandro Tostier. Tostier. I prefer Toasties myself. Five, Rico Hoey. Four, Siwoo Kim. Three, Kevin, Kevin Doherty. That guy mashes it off the tee. Two, Scotty Scheffler. Number one, Rafael Campos. Strokes gained on approach, top 12. Uh, a tie for 10th, Siwoo Kim. Ryan Moore played great last week. Sahith Tigala. Nine is Jake Knapp. Eight is Taylor Moore. Seven is Parker Coody. When's he going to make his breakthrough, old Parker? Six is Stuart Sink. Five, Wyndham Clark. Four, Scotty Scheffler. A tie for second. Very impressive last week. Chandler Phillips and Will Zalatoris. Strokes gained on approach. Of course, it's like, uh, you know, it's like Denny McCarthy, Aaron Badley on putting. It's going to be Tom Hoagie. Yeah, Tom Hoagie, number one for strokes gained approach over the last eight weeks. Strokes gained T to green, top 12. A tie for 12th, Doug Gim. Rico Hoey, Sahith Tigala, and Will Zalatoris. 11, our old friend Joe Damon. A tie for ninth, Bud Cawley and Tom Hoagie. A tie for seventh, Jason Day and Taylor Moore again. Six is Kirk Kitagama again. Five is Chanda Phillips again. Four, a tie for third, Wyndham Clark with Kashmir Keith Mitchell. Do you think he needs a cap? Two, Siwoo Kim. I told you he's going to be popular this week. Number one, he's a bit like Tom Hoagie being number one of the strokes going on approach ranking every eight-week cycle, Scotty Scheffler. Strokes going putting, because we know it's really, really important this week. Some numbers we don't always go into. Top, uh, top 12, a tie for 11. Tom Hoagie and Jake Knapp. 10 is Wyndham Clark. 8 a tie. Jason Day and Ryan McCormick. Your guess is as good as mine. Seven. The Swede. Very, very short, but very, very straight. Great putter. Alex Bjork. Six. Like night follows day. Aaron Badley. Five is Taylor Montgomery. Another one. Uh, four is Raul Pereira. Three, Sahith Tagala. Two, Martin Trainer. Number one. To be fair, it was only one tournament. Henrik Norlander. Strokes going current form. So these are the, tw the in this field, these are the best 12 players right now over the past eight weeks for strokes gained current form. A a 12th is Alex Noren. I think a lot of people would have backed Alex. The bookmakers know that. That's why they put him at such short price for a guy that hasn't won on the PJ Tour. Uh, he's also never won on Bermuda Grass Greens, ever. I know these aren't Bermuda grass, they're overseeded with Poa Trivialis, which will be an advantage to him because he likes smoother surfaces, but Alex Noren at 33 to 1 doesn't wash. 11, Andrew Novak. Is Novak ever going to get off the heater? 10, Doug Gim. Is Doug Gim ever going to get a top 10? A significant top game, top 10. 9, Kurt Kitayama. 8, Jake Knapp. 
A tie for sixth, Jason Day and our old friend Tom Hoagie. Five is Siwoo Kim. Four is Wyndham Clark. Three is Sahith Tigala. Two is Henrik Norlander, and that's actually genuine because you can throw in the Puerto Rico Open on top of some other tournament he did. Number one, of course, it's Scotty Scheffler. I'm not going to go through winning prices because they're pretty futile, really, because they were at the full segment. But anyway, Finau was 22 to 1, Coke Crank 50 to 1. Carlos Ortiz, 160 to 1. That averages at 77 to 1. And if you, I mean, you listen to this, guys. It, it's just, it's absolute madness. 150 to 1, 400 to 1, 300 to 1, 125 to 1, 70 to 1, Wyndham Clark. 100 to 1, Nick Taylor. 80 to 1, Hideki Matsuama. 50 to 1, Jake Knapp. 100 to 1, Austin Ekro. 150 to 1, Bryce Garnett. Uh, 250 to 1, Peter Molnarty. The only player that's won at short odds this year. 13 to 2 and 11 to 2 is Scotty Scheffler. Will it continue again this week? We will find out. Okay. That's just about it from me in terms of what we need to know. Um, what am I going to do? Well, get me through 250 likes. That'd be fantastic this week, please. Come on, the cues, keep it going. Don't forget at Bamford Golf on X. I'm getting the suspense in there. <laughs> Eight points win only. Three to one, Scotty Scheffler. Right, I said it. I'm there. Five of Scotty's eight PGA Tour victories have been on Bermuda Grass, overseeded with Poa Trivialist Greens. Two more have come on, at Bay Hill on Bermuda Grass. Uh, we know that his other victory at the Masters came on a Bermuda grass golf course, except for a bent grass greens. This is his territory. This is where he dominates. When he goes up country, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Bent grass, bent poa, um, no Bermuda grass on the golf courses. But for now, I'm on him. I'm just going to cover him off. It's an insurance policy. I'm not the kind of person that goes with without markets. I'd rather just take him and sit in there on a Sunday knowing that Scotty Scheffler is within the top first page of the leaderboard and scaring the living daylights of anyone else that's on that leaderboard. Clearly, on a golf course where strokes game putting is important, there is a weakness there. But if there is one guy in this field that can absolutely beast the golf course from strokes game D to green and win it by gaining, say, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 of a stroke each round with the putter, Scotty Scheffler is that man. I'm on him. Eight points, win only 3-1 to one with bet 3-6-5. Next up, 20 to 1 with William Hill. I've got eight places each way. Wide. I mean, we're talking about fairways that are 35 to 40 yards wide at their landing areas. That's wide. Um, we're talking about trivia, uh, poa trivialist greens. And we're talking about a golf course where you, um, you can be a little bit errant off the tee. But what I want to see is long driving distances so that driving distance all drives number is critical for me this week i love a player also that can scramble around here the, the greens as i said the green complexes are raised and they're they don't they don't have a lot of rough around them so you've got a lot of shaved areas and green and and, and approach shots that are going to get to the edges of green complexes and fall away Great prep, has to be said. Brilliant prep for the Masters. It really is good prep. This guy actually made the top 10 at Augusta National last year on his debut. There's not many golfers do that. Sahith Tigala. I'm on Tigala at 20 to 1. Two points each way with William Hill. If there's a player that will not give us... He's not worried about the Masters. He's not worried about, you know, any instances of him actually winning that there. And not many in this field will have that. But if there's a guy that really wants a second PGA Tour a victory to validate himself and win against a field that contains... It's not the greatest of fields, we know that, but it still contains Scotty Scheffler, Wyndham Clark, the US Open champion, Will Zalatoris... And Tony Finau. Great, great players. A win here would be far better than that 40 net championship win he got at the end of last year. 
And he's already fourth in the President's Cup standings. A win here pretty much guarantees himself a spot on that team. And for someone with Indian heritage, that's a big deal. So Sahith Tagala, 20-1 with William Hill, playing great golf. And, as you noticed, was in the top three of my strokes gained putting metric over the last three, uh, the last eight weeks. Plus, of course, was within approach and off the tee numbers and tee to green numbers. What is there not to like about Sahih Tagala on a golf course where power off the tee is important and there is a little bit of width? I'm all over him. Two more. 55 to 1, my next shout. This guy won the Arnold Palmer Invitational last year on a very wide golf course that's over 7,400 yards wide, uh, long. Uh, fairways there, 33, 35 yards wide. Likes it in the wind, if there is some this week. Likes it on Bermuda Greens. Not particularly alien in terms of Bermuda Poa Trivialis. I just like him on tougher tests that are longer. Uh, he's done well at the Honda Classic in the past, at PGA National. Second at the Mexico Open. We know that is a bomber's golf course. Second at the Scottish Open. Second at the CJ Cup, the one that Rory McIlroy won at Congaree. Congaree. Almost got it wrong. On top of that, won at Bay Hill last year and also won, uh, was in the top uh, six, yes, yeah, six, PGA Championship last year at Oak Hill. Kurt Kitayama, as you heard earlier, he's over a lot of those strokes, game, green, uh, strokes gained eight-week metrics, is Kurt Kitayama. Think he could go very well this week at 55 to 1. Don't forget at Bamford Golf on Twitter. 250 to likes, please, this week. Get us through that ceiling. One more. Of course, when you're going eight points to win at 3 to 1 on the 3 to 1 favourite, you haven't got a lot to spend elsewhere. But I'm excited by Taylor Moore. 70 to 1 I got with Boyle Sports, eight places each way. I've got a point each way on Taylor Moore. Now, a lot of you will remember Taylor from last year. He won the Valspar Championship at 70 to 1. He held off that week, didn't he? If you remember, Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, and Tommy Fleetwood, and Adam Schenk. Now, Taylor Moore, that kind of form on a long Difficult golf course is what I'm looking for. And this guy can whack it a long way. He's got good greens and regulation numbers and hasn't done a great deal, but the momentum's kind of growing. I think he'll get a lot from last week. He was 30, 31st at the players, which strategic, short. I don't think that's Taylor Moore. 13th last week, again, when defending for the first time on the PGA Tour. He'll get a lot from that from last week. Um, seventh for approach. 12th for around the green and 8th for T2 green. He's long off the tee box. He's got a very high ball flight. Yes, he's missed the cut here twice. Don't care about that. He's a Dallas resident and he was born in San Angelo, Texas. So he is a Texas guy. This event, or winning in Texas, would mean a hell of a lot. He's already in the Masters tournament, so he doesn't need to worry about that. All of that stuff, the Alex Norens have got to worry about, the Tom Hoagies and players like that, the Keith Cashmere Mitchells trying to get into the into the market. He hasn't got to worry about that. He's in because he was in the top, uh, he was in the Tour Championship top 30, so he gets straight into the Masters. I just think he's building that momentum. He's free enough to play well. Um, and get this. Three of his six biggest putting weeks have come on Bermuda Grass or Bermuda Grass Poa Trivialis Greens at Harbour Town, their Poa Trivialis, at Sedgefield and at Copperhead. We know that they are Poa Trivialis at Overseed. And on top of that, this guy has finished fourth both in 2022 and 2023 with Matthew Neesmith at the Zurich team event. Now, that team event is played at 2 TPC Louisiana, a golf course that has that very rare mix of Mini Verdi Bermuda grass overseeded with Poa Trivialis, the exact same re uh, greens that you get here. So, Taylor Moore excites me at 70 to 1. 
Kurt Kitayama excites me at 55 to 1. I think if anyone's going to win this from within that standard 20 to 1 to 25 to 1, 30 to 1 spot that Cam Young should have won at last week but didn't, it's going to be Sahid Tagala. I can't see Will Zalatoris gaining 1.8 strokes with the putter for four rounds. Um, Wyndham Clark. Clearly has the game. Clearly a fantastic putter. Can he get over the disappointment of that horrible horseshoe at the end of the players a fortnight ago? That's the question. And then, of course, just because, Scotty Scheffler at 3-1. to one. Right, follow me on Twitter at Bamford Golf. Get me through those 250 like barrier. And, of course, press that subscribe button. The algorithm loves your comments. Throw them at me. See you again next week. Valero, Texas Open. Only one week away from the Masters next week.